The biggest takeaway here is the entire James Harden thing. Um, you know, that responds last two games, lack of aggression, right? Like under 20 points. Then tonight comes back 42 points, eight rebounds, nine assists. Not only does he make the bucket to send it to overtime, he also makes the game winning bucket. And it's the second game winner of this series. And the last game winner was game one. And he mm -hmm. also had four, over 40 points in that game. He had 45. Yep. You know, so to see Harden balling yeah. like this, and you, you have said it before the pod, to see Harden balling like this, th this is why they got him here, right? We know fourth quarter and overtime, and B gets clamped up by Horford, and we're going to talk about that later. This is literally why Harden's here, to pick up the yeah. slack. Yeah. This just, for some reason, Joel and B over his tenure with the 76ers, he's always needed, and this is not a bad thing. You always need another guard, especially if you're a big man. You're going to need that other guard that can kind of pick up the slack, especially in the crunch time, and get his shots. Ben Simmons was never able to do that, and they kind of relied on Tobias Harris to do that. He's not that type of player. So James Harden is being the perfect player that they envisioned him to be with the team in terms of in the clutch. Can we count on him to knock down big buckets and take us to the promised land? Now, they haven't made the promised land yet, but still, this is a game to me last year or a year before last they had Ben Simmons. This is a game they lose for sure. Oh, without so a ben, doubt. But the, so James Harden, without a doubt, makes a difference being with his team now, especially having another year under his belt because he got traded last year halfway through the season. So it kind of they, their chemistry level wasn't there yet, but they had another offseason to kind of you know improve their chemistry. So it's definitely you can you, you can tell it's playing dividends for sure. You 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 made a like a major point. Like they don't win game one or this game, you know, last year or the year before because they they just oh, didn't no. have that, they didn't have that that secondary offensive guy. Like like you said, you know, they tried to make Tobias Harris that guy. You know, Max he's good, but he's gonna need a couple more years under his belt. This is literally why Harden's here. The only question is consistent. It's like the Anthony Davis thing, right? Mm -hmm. The only question is consistency, especially in the postseason. We know he's gonna put up. The big game. He's got two 40 point games a series, but he's also got two games where he didn't score 20. So you're going to need to see that consistency from him the entirety of the season, the rest of the, or the entire of the series going down the wire, you know, as we, as we, you know, move down the rest of this one, um, you know, between these two teams. Uh, but this was really reassuring. And, and you got those throwback James Harden vibes from him. Oh, yeah. You know, the step back and, you know, that, that first step, like that first step has been there. He's beat a lot of guys off the dribble. You know, in, in these, you know, two 40 point games he's had um, exploiting those switches like Al Horford was on fire defensively in that fourth quarter and he blew straight past him, you know, a possession or two to get a bucket. Oh, yeah. You know, I yeah, think no. off the dribble even to hit that floater to tie the game up. I had to go back and see he was guarding him in that play, you know, but to see him have that step, we thought he lost that step. But to see him have yeah. that step in those yeah. are, and that's the reason why they're able to kind of pull away with this one is big time for him. Yeah, I think Jalen Brown was guarding him. Jalen Brown has actually done a great job over him the last like two games. That's why he's been struggling. So for yeah. him to even get that bucket on Jay on Jalen Brown was huge. But yeah. yeah, it's definitely it's see the thing is Al Horford definitely did give I know uh Joel had like what 34 points, but I know mm -hmm. Al Horford did give him some fits though. That that 34 wasn't that was a hard 34 that he had to work for. And most yeah. of those 34 points came within probably the first half in the third quarter they didn't really yeah. a lot of them been coming to fourth and overtime so he definitely Al Horford definitely did his job and I would I would continue to keep putting Al Horford on him like the way they did in the uh, fourth quarter in, in the overtime but you know Al Horford damn near he, he looked like the defensive player of the year out there I'm not even gonna lie to you no he was and this is the Celtics team last year Marcus Smart was defensive player of the year Al Horford like you said looked like the best defender on his team like they were there were times like like this game where I was like, if Horford, is, I texted you, I said, if Horford is on him, B, do not give him B the ball. Simple as he, that. He looked like the best defense player on the school. Man, yeah. He, like he looked better than B because he was he was having B second guess a lot of his moves and his decision making, and then that's why sometimes when he was in the post, he turned the ball over because he was trying to kick it to either Tyrese Maxey or James Harden, and it didn't work out. But it just worked out like you just saw it there. But that's that's the thing about being a big man in the clutch. Sometimes you really don't know how you're going to facilitate the offense because you're giving a chance for the defense to get set. And sometimes yeah. it's hard to do that as a traditional big man because he had, Joel B has range, but he still is a traditional big man too. He does a lot of his work in the post. So sometimes it's hard to set that up for a big yeah. man. Yeah, de definitely true. Like it gives the defense a chance to kind of make their decision and all of that. You know, they're going to throw that double team, like a couple of dribbles in, we know they're going to throw that double team. So now you have to make a decision. Like I said, it just makes you more thankful that James Harden is here. Back to the Al Horford thing, and I know Philly won this game, but I'm just obsessed with the Al Horford thing. You blocked him B three times in that fourth quarter. That, I mean, like ha like that's, that's something you just rarely see. He blocked him mm -hmm. three times and it was reminiscent 
to those early like Horford and Embiid matchups. Remember like when Horford was, you know, with Boston and they used to match up, you know, before Horford ends up going to Philly and then makes his trip back over. You know, it was reminiscent of that. Horford has always been a guy who's been known as one of the better Embiid defenders in the East. The entire joke when Philly got him was that they got him just so he ain't got to, NBA ain't got to deal with him in the playoffs or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And and like you said, it was a good game for him from a statistical standpoint, like that first, those first three quarters, especially he looked great. Um, It was good to see him kind of shake that rust off because I do think that was an issue. His first two games back in game two and game three. It was. But still, like, this is going to be something to watch the rest of the way through. This is the best version we got of Embiid. This series, the MVP, and Horford still had his way defensively. He was a – I know they lost, but he was awesome this game. He, he And Tatum was awesome defensively too. Yeah, you know, was. to give him credit. You know, that team was – this is a game Philly should have. You texted me. This is a game Philly should have ran with. You know, it so is. shout out to that Celtics defense for doing their thing. I know they lost, but that defense really helped keep them in it. They had a six. They had a sixteen point lead. So a sixteen point lead in today's league, I get that's not a lot of points, but for me in the playoffs, if you're winning by sixteen, especially at home, you got to come away with that win. It'd be different if you had a sixteen point lead on the road. I can kind of see why you would lose that. The crowd gets involved, everything like that. But you're at home. You have your home crowd behind you. You should. You should. I'm not saying you should win by sixteen. But you, you shouldn't have the team come back on your ass and end up losing, almost potentially losing the game before you go into overtime. So that's that's a red flag in of itself to me. But they got they got away with the win, so it doesn't really matter. But this they shouldn't. Philly is known for losing leagues. I should say that. So they just they should figure out how not to lose them. I say that. But it's back to Harden. Um, and I, I, I was reading some. I was the first thing I did was I went to Twitter and I'm like, what's Twitter mm-hmm. saying? I know Twitter's gonna have these, you know, these these stats all over the place. When you see games like this, you know, the the first thing you texted me was, this is the James Harden we wanted to see, right? And we also talked about that in game one. Harden is, I know Harden has this, um, you know, thing about him where he has his reputation that he's a bad playoff player. If you look, I read something, uh, he's one of few guards with over 10 40 point playoff games. There's Jerry West, Kobe, Michael Jordan, and then there's him. So hit what I say, I have to say this. The the negative playoff reputation we have about James Harden is really strange because there's some stuff from a historical standpoint that came about today, especially yeah. that that that's really significant. You know what I mean? For him to have this many 40 point playoff games or whatever the case may be, yeah. you know, all it is. It makes me kind of question, has he is is he that bad of a playoff player? I I think the 40 point games came against teams maybe in the first or second round where okay. They probably weren't as talented as the team that he was on, I guess, or the Rockets, or maybe even the Thunder. If he had, I don't know if he had a forty-point game with the Thunder. I probably doubt it because KD and Russ took them shots. But majority of them probably came with the um, with the Rockets. I'm just guessing those probably in the first and second round because we all know when he faced the Warriors, he kind of struggled a little bit. Yeah, like it was closeout games. I, the game I can remember that's most recent. It was the game. It was Game Six of the Western Conference Finals. They were up big in Golden State. Like, I think they were up by, like, 18 or 20. And then he shot a poor percentage that game. And then in Game 7, he played really bad. Mm-hmm. So I feel like those are the two games that stick with me. But he can have games like he did in Game um, 2 and 3, like like 5 for 15s and 3 for 16s. I, I think he's had a lot of more of those instead of those 40-point games that, that, that he has. Yeah, and I think another thing is too is is the big game stuff, right? Like the That's like it is, hold yeah. on, it's the like we've seen some game seven meltdowns or the game six meltdowns or whatever the case may be. I know there was a series, I think this one was um you know a couple years back where he missed I think like around like almost fifty three pointers in a series. So I think it's yeah I think it's the it, it, that was a series against the Warriors. So I yeah. think with him it's the big game stuff, you know. But he's weird. Be, he's weird because you can look at these records he set from playoff standpoint. And then even look at his averages and they're not that bad. But like I said, it kind of gets offset by those big moments, you know, or those those big moments where he, you know, he kind of chokes away things or he doesn't perform in those big games where you need him to kind of, you know, close things out. So he's a he's a weird playoff player to judge. There are guys who I just know are not built for the playoffs or whose game doesn't translate to the playoffs. And for a minute, Harden's kind of had this aura about it when people are kind of like his game doesn't translate to the playoffs. I don't think that's the case. I think his game does translate to the playoffs because he has enough great in major playoff games quite like today and he can yeah. take over for him it's just a matter of coming through when those big games come around so that's going to yeah. be interesting to see if this series goes seven can he keep it up if the next yeah. series that they advance goes seven can he keep it up and so on and yeah. so forth i was thinking one of the other series that he blew to is with the white Howard was on the houston rockets it was against the portland trailblazers yeah i, I know for sure i think they were yeah i think they might have had a three one lead or i had a lead in series for sure and they 
and they and Portland came back and won that series. But I think the problem with James Harden is sometimes in the playoffs because he's so used to getting those foul calls in the regular season, he doesn't get those in the playoffs. So sometimes that disrupts his game. That's mm -hmm. what I think happens sometimes. Because yep. we all know a few years back, probably two or three years ago, I don't know if you would get frustrated, but I would get very frustrated seeing that he had 50 or 60 points and he had 30, like 30 free throw attempts. That is yeah. crazy. Yeah. So I'm just like, I think, I think the the league kind of noticed that and was like, we need to stop giving certain players like these foul calls because they're hunting for fouls and they're not getting the fouls organically. So I feel like that has had a lot to do with why this game the playoffs kind of decreases a little bit. I yeah. Like. In those big moments. Yep. So yeah. like, that's the question, you know, like. I think the biggest takeaway is we know he can do this right now. We know he can get these 40-point mm -hmm. games. And this was – I'm not taking anything away. It was a major 40-point game. If they lose, you go down 3-1, oh, and yeah. now a lot a lot more stuff is in question. Like, this is a yeah. must-win for Philly. You're at home. You need to tie it. You can end up going down 3-1. You were horrible the last two previous games. But like I said, the thing is, if we go to a game seven – or no, not even that – can he maintain these types of games when they need him to, right? Like, it's the same thing as Anthony Davis. Anthony oh, yeah. Davis, there yeah. were nights, there this series, there were nights where he looked amazing, right? There were games this mm -hmm. postseason where we're like, he can be, he can get to that number one player in the league spot. I read a CBS article that said that, so don't say I'm crazy. I read a CBS article. He has a he chance did. to get within that conversation, you know, but then there are also those games where he's not aggressive and he's not looking like the game yeah. a couple of nights ago. It can be the same with Harden. There are nights yeah. where he looks dominant in the playoffs yeah. and we're like, oh, he's back. And then it just kind of goes away. So he has to just keep yeah. this up. That is a great comparison because Anthony Davis is that type of same player. Like, that's why everybody predicted that he would play well like he did last night because he played like complete shit in game two. So let's be honest, in probably game four, he probably is not going to play well. So it's 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 the weird thing with the Lakers thing because one day LeBron plays great and the other Le Andy Davis doesn't. They have to get that figured out. But back to, yeah, James Harden, I feel like if the 76ers want to go places, James 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 Harden has to play well. Joel Embiid yeah. is always going to get his 30 points because he knows how to get to the free throw line and still get to his 30 even if he's having the back end. So you're going to get production out of him. But... The 76ers can't have James Harden shoot, shooting five for 15 from the field and expect to win. If they yeah. want to go to the finals, he's going to have to play well. That's just, yeah. he's like the deciding factor, just like the Lakers. If Anthony Davis plays well, the Lakers are going to win. If James Harden plays well, the 76ers are going to win. It's that simple. That simple. Um, and even the, also the thing is we haven't gotten a dominant version of Therese Maxey yet. Well, I don't want to say dominant, but we haven't even, we've seen Therese okay. Maxey. Okay. Yeah, like we've, we've seen Therese Maxey have better playoff series than this, right? Mm -hmm. Like you know we, we haven't even gotten the best version of him just yet so that'll be interesting to see the rest of the way through for philly uh, but like i said they responded because if they would have lost this game Ooh. it would have been huge you go down three Ooh. one you're in a, you go down three one you're not like i'm always gonna bet on you not coming back always every single time I, it, it, it's possible but i'm always gonna bet on you not you, coming back you going down three one you probably go win game five and lose game six exactly if, like, if anything i feel like you're not going to game six. at least rare once you go to that game seven, that probably means you you might win because just like I think of it like this: okay, if they're if they're forcing game seven, why wouldn't they win if they have the momentum? But to me, you're probably gonna lose game five and then lose. I mean, lose game or win game five and then lose game six. So most of yeah. the time, how it works. Like your next two games, you're in, if you lose tonight, your next two games, your back is against the wall. Like you, yeah. it's hard to play a comfortable. I know these are NBA players and they and they know how to do it, but it's hard to play a comfortable style of basketball. You know, if you know you you have you're gonna have to do something miraculous to make the series competitive again. You know, mm -hmm. so. He, it, it was great for them to respond the way they did um and they did you know respond to a celtics team that when they turn it on defensively they're absolutely scary for them to make that adjustment and, and kind of weather that storm you know i know like i said they should have you know ran away with it with that 16 point lead that you mentioned but they still weathered the storm right kept their composure um and we're still able to win it you know and that's kind of what it's all about if you get into these situations comebacks are gonna happen this is the nba and the celtics are probably the hungriest team in the league right now you know what i mean they weren't gonna fold so we could talk about them blowing the lead but boston wasn't gonna fold at all um yeah. you know for them to weather the storm played because i remember somebody texting me on snap one of our you know one of our supporters you know had texted me he was like um you know who do you got winning like going to overtime who you got winning i'm like i got boston because of the defensive momentum they had you know so for philly to kind of weather all of that and respond the yeah. way they did it was dope no you had boston at the 76 because this is how i think to me this is just, I, I don't it's a weird way how i think if the team forces overtime never losing in the fourth quarter because once once upon a time the 76 were losing because they gave the lead like you said they forced overtime i feel like they just had the momentum once they yeah. forced overtime and came back from that little lead that they blew i feel like they had the momentum. yeah true
True. That's so, very true. And they, but they did almost lose to James Harden. If James Harden doesn't hit that three point shot in the corner, they lose the game. And Marcus yeah. Smart damn near did a buzzer beater. I yeah. forget that's that's forgotten. Yeah, <laughs> man. I was scared, not gonna lie. I was scared. I walked off when they were there about to do the replay because I was like, he didn't get that off. Because I remember they were gonna do the replay on the shot. Like, there's yeah. no way he got this. I shot. could tell. I could tell he did it live. I was like, nah, he switched. It. He switched that thing, you know. But yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Tatum too. Um, he had a really bad first half, um, and then followed it up with a really good second half and ended up uh, with 24 points and 18 rebounds. And he hit some big shots in this one as well. 18. Yeah. And six assists, which is nice. You know, he's hit some big shots. We're, we're learning, you know, we're continuing to learn what type of player Jason Tatum is, you know, in a game where he wasn't totally super in rhythm offensively, you know, and in a series where he hasn't been super dominant, maybe outside of game one, um, you know, he, he made up for kind of the lack of dominance on the offensive end. Um, the defense, like I said, along with Al Horford, Tatum's mm-hmm. defense was awesome as well. And I, I'm always going to revisit these conversations. We had an episode you know what I mean? We talked about the comparisons between him and Luca. There's a lot here on the table for Jason Tatum this postseason. You know, we know he's a hell of a defender. He's got more of these big games under his belt than Luca does. And I hate to bring it to this conversation, you know, but if he goes back to the conference finals, we talk about what he has to prove out of this series. That's a whole bunch of conference finals under his belt, right? There's a potential to come go back to the final for the second time. So it's just putting into perspective how good Jason Tatum really is and what he can get out of this series and, and really the rest, of, the rest of the way down this postseason. Yeah. So, like, seeing him respond the way he did, that's how superstars respond. You don't have a dominant game offensively. You still find your shots. You're still going for him. You're still aggressive. You defend at a high level. You're doing other things. They needed that from him. That was big. I know they lost, you know, but how he substituted that his game out with those other little things, it was dope to see that from him. Yeah. He probably just started being more aggressive in the second half and going to the hoop because I feel like when Jason Tatum's game kind of gets inefficient because he's a, he's a relatively efficient player. I feel like when it starts getting inefficient, he shoots too many jumpers. When he has the frame he has, he's like 6'9", probably like 230, 240. He's big enough to get by people, use your strength to get to the basket. I feel like he doesn't take advantage of the, that mismatch he has every on the night, like on the nightly basis. Mm-hmm. I feel like sometimes that's why he might struggle from shooting from distance. That's yeah. that's my only like criticism of him. Yeah, when Jay, like you said, when Jay stands aggressive, everything opens up, you know, and he has to continue to do that. It's something that he's honed in on the last couple of years, and he has to keep his foot on the gas with that. But like I said, I love the defensive stuff he showed today. Um, you know, uh, I, I love the stuff that we saw from him, you know, even with the shot making, the confidence to still take those shots, knowing that you didn't have an amazing night. I know he had rhythm going into a couple of them, but to still take those shots and have that confidence, yeah. it's awesome. So interesting series the rest of the way down. Biggest key, like you said, is James Harden. You know what I mean? Yeah. If James Harden plays well, 76 is probably win this series in seven. I can see this series going seven. This this yeah. proves to me it's probably going seven games. And that means Boston would get the uh they would, they would get the uh, home game game yeah. seven, right? Yeah. That's, that's gonna be a tough game to win. Be Boston, tough. Crowd is, Boston yeah. crowd is crazy. Yeah. Like, you got words for them. I'm not gonna say it, but they're crazy. I just they're that. crazy. Um, but yeah, because It'd be a beautiful. It would be a beautiful thing. I don't know if the Lakers make the final. See the Lakers versus Celtics again. But I, I, I'm kind of really rooting for the 76 because I want to just see Joel and B get to, at least get to the finals. Yeah, you don't you have wanna... to win it. I just see. I just want to see at least Jason Tatum got to the finals. I realized he lost, but at least he got a taste of it. He can still get to it in later years. But James, I mean James Harden, especially and Joel and B have. I feel like they're they've been stuck at this certain point that they've been waiting to get over the hump. Yes. So I feel like they they I, I really want to see them get into the finals to see what they can do. 